and welcome to another episode of the Ultimate AFL Show for Season 2016. This is Episode 9, and in this episode I'll be looking back at Round 3 before we put it in the archives, and then I'll be looking towards Round 4, which is set to be another cracking round. They're all going to be cracking rounds this season. So, without further ado, let's get straight into looking at round three. Round three started on Friday night at this prestigious Adelaide Oval which just looks like a fantastic venue to go watch a game of footy and I'd like to go there one day because I've never been there to watch a game of footy and it just looks like a fantastic venue. And uh, well this game was between Port Adelaide and Essendon. This was an interesting game. Port Adelaide got absolutely smashed by the Crows in showdown 40 in round two. Essendon, they were coming off a famous win against Melbourne in round two, so they'll be co they were coming off a victory going into this Friday night match. So it was a bit of a danger game for Port Adelaide. I think a lot of people were thinking, hmm, this could be, you know, this could be a danger game, especially if they lost this game. How, you know, how bad would that be for the power and what would that leave them in? But they didn't lose the game. They actually won the game and dominated the game from start to finish. At quarter time, Port Adelaide were leading 7-3 to Essendon, 1-4. So from quarter time right through to the end of the game, they were dominating this game. They didn't let Essendon in from start to finish. And the final score score ended up being 17-10, 112, defeating Essendon, 7-9, 51. Uh, the goal kickers for Port Adelaide, Young and Dixon, got three. Armand Gray and Westhoff got two each. Boak, Ebert, Polak, Bond, Jones and Wines got singles each. While for Essendon, Danaher kicked two as well as Comma, Ambrose, Goddard and Merritt kicked singles each. That was in front of a crowd of over 44,000 at Adelaide Oval. So Port Adelaide, they bounced back after their thrashing in round two. Saturday there were five games, that's what highlighted Saturday and it started at the MCG, the home of footy between St Kilda and Collingwood. St Kilda's first home game at the MCG and first game at the MCG for the year and uh, well it was a very interesting game this one because uh, St Kilda they led at uh, quarter time, half time and three quarter time and then ended up winning the game 18-11-119 defeating Collingwood, 14-6-90. We know that Collingwood only uh, won by a point in round two and of course got smashed in round one against the Swans. So a loss here for Collingwood really puts them under the spotlight now and uh, they're just too easy to play against. That's what Buckley stated and uh, it's exactly right, really, especially looking at the uh, the tactics and, and you know how they played and uh, you know where men were on the ground. They're just too easy to, to play against. So Collingwood, they've got a lot of work to do. St Kilda, they were not too bad in round one. They scored over 100 points and, of course, last week played the Dogs. So, you know, obviously the Dogs are just a very exciting team. So, you know, St Kilda got, uh, I guess, uh, smashed in, in all areas of the game last week but uh, came out and won this game pretty finely. And, uh, well, the goal kickers for St Kilda, Weller, Stephen got three each, Rewalt and Bruce and Gilbert Billings kicked two each, while Sinclair, McCartan, Loney and Armitage kicked singles each. For Collingwood, for Solo, Cloak, Degui and Penderbury got two each. Howe, in his first game for Collingwood, got a single as well as Aish, Cripps, Oxley, Langdon and Adams. So, Collingwood have got... A lot of work to do, no question about that. Over at the Eddie Had Stadium on Saturday afternoon, it was Richmond and Adelaide. Adelaide, a big win against Port Adelaide, as I mentioned, in showdown 40. They were playing Richmond, who lost by a point to Collingwood last week at the MCG. Won their round one game, so they were looking to get two wins on the board for season 2016. Adelaide were also looking to do the same after their round one loss. And, uh, well, it finished... With, uh, with Adelaide winning quite convincingly in the end. They led at every change and finished the game 19-14-126, defeating Richmond 13-14-92. The goal kickers for Richmond. Lloyd kicked three. Vickery Rioli kicked two each. We have Greg who got 
Single, as well as Rewalt, Cochin, Lambert, Hampson, and Edwards. For Adelaide, Walker kicked three, as well as Betts and Douglas. Thompson kicked two, as well as Sloan and Lyons. And Smith and Jenkins and McGovern kicked singles each. Richmond, they are another team that are under the spotlight. You might remember that I... Uh, Put them as 11th on the ladder in my ladder predictions. And, well, it's uh, seeming to be that way at this present stage. So, um, yeah, they're just not playing good football, Richmond, either. They're a bit like Collingwood in the sense. The Sydney Derby was at the SCG on Saturday twilight. It was the Sydney Swans and the Greater Western Sydney Giants, both coming off wins the week before. Both coming off good wins, actually, the week before. And, uh, well, it was a close game, actually, throughout the uh, the game, really. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sydney were able to keep GWS scoreless in the first quarter, but they came back and, uh, well, it was 5-4 to 4-4 with the Sydney Swans leading at half-time. They led at every single change of the Swans, but GWS were sticking there throughout the game. The Swans ended up winning 14-9-93 to GWS 10-8-68. The goal kickers for the Swans, Franklin again had another good game kicking Four goals. Tippett, he kicked two, which is good to see. Hatterbury also kicked two. Mitchell, Heaney, Sinclair, Parker, Padley and McGlynn kicked singles each. For GWS, Patton and Palmer kicked two each. Congilo also kicked two. We also had Ward, Munford, Johnson and Kelly getting on the scoreboard by kicking singles between them. Hanelbury was the leading disposal getter of this game, had a very good game. Parker probably had a just as better game though, he took an absolute screamer of a mark during the game at the SCG and over 37,000 watched this game at the SCG so uh, yeah it was a good game actually and I think there's uh, there's going to be some uh, some better games between these two sides because they seem not even, Sydney Swans seem like a bit, a, a bit better of a side than the GWS Giants but uh, the Giants are Really good at the moment. I think uh, they should be happy with their form, even though they lost this game. And a uh, big game coming up next week back at uh, Marnie Carovo in Canberra against Port Adelaide, which we'll look towards to very shortly. Two games Saturday night at Metricon Stadium. There was one of them, Gold Coast Suns and Carlton. Gold Coast Suns, probably the smoky to uh, make the top eight at the moment with their form. They were able to win this game, and they stay undefeated after three rounds. 13-16-94, defeating Carlton 5-11-94. 41. Colton actually gave it a fair good go until the second half when the Suns were able to uh, put the foot down on the accelerator and just speed to the end of the game with the four points. The goal kickers for Gold Coast, Lynch kick four, Martin kick three, Cameron Day, Hall, Males Maleski, Malira and Sexton kicked singles between them for Colton, Casbolt, Cripps, Kerno, Tuvi and right kicked singles between them. Hall, another leading disposal getter game for the Gold Coast. He uh, led the disposals for Gold Coast, led the disposals for the game. And, uh, well, he's just one of the most important players, as I mentioned last week, for the Gold Coast. He is just doing everything at the moment. He is just playing absolutely superbly. So, good stuff by Aaron Hall. They got over 13,000 at Metricon Stadium to see Gold Coast stay undefeated. The other game on Saturday, the final game of Saturday, and, uh, well, the Saturday night game, the other Saturday night game, it was West Coast and Fremantle, the derby. Very interesting game. Fremantle have not won a game after two games going into this match. West Coast was thrashed by Hawthorne once again, 46-point losers. And, uh, it well, it was a close game pretty much until the fourth quarter. Uh, Fremantle led at quarter time, West Coast led at half time, they then led at three quarter time pretty convincingly, 7-11 to 4-10, and then in the end pretty much sped away with the game, and what was a, a low kind of scrappy affair between these two sides, but West Coast were able to win 12-20-92, a lot of behinds there for West Coast, defeating Fremantle 8-11-59, uh, Darling kicked three for West Coast as well as Jetta and, Le and Lexard who kicked two each. Cripps, Shuey, Hill, McKenzie and Kennedy kicked singles between them while for Fremantle, Pavlidge kicked three, Walters kicked two, Fife, Langdon and Ballantyne kicked singles each. It's just, it's not good for Fremantle at the moment and they've got a tough task next week going to any hat. West Coast, good bounce back though after, uh, what was a very, very bad loss to Hawthorne last week. Sunday highlighted by three games. It was a super Sunday, probably one of the best Sundays I've seen of football. There were two quality games, 
and uh, I don't think we really expected two quality games, to be honest, considering the three games, probably only one of them really stood out as the quality game before this round. And, uh, well, I was lucky enough to be at Blundstone Arena to see the game between North Melbourne and Melbourne, a 41-goal game. It was unbelievable. It was breezy, it was windy, but it really did have a good impact on the game. And, in fact, it didn't really stop the goals from coming. There was probably 60-metre bombs uh, from outside 60 uh, going by the wind, pretty much, affected by the wind to go through the two sticks. It was just an unbelievable game of football. Uh, to put it in context, at quarter time, North Melbourne dominated uh, the first quarter, pretty much. 8-2 to 2-2. Two, two. That was the... That was the uh, the quarter time score. Melbourne were uh, trailing by a heap. No one saw the comeback because uh, at quarter time, sorry, at half time, Melbourne were in front, 11-5 to 10-4. And then at three quarter time, Melbourne were behind by a couple of goals, 17-7 to 14-7. And then it came down to the last 20 seconds where Melbourne could have got a goal, but the siren actually went before he actually kicked it. Uh, the final score being 21-10, 136 North Melbourne, defeating Melbourne just 20-11, It was a, a stunning game of football. I've never seen such a high-scoring AFL game live before. It was just absolutely stunning. Um, now, let's have a look at the goal kickers for North Melbourne. Harvey kicks six. That's a uh, personal best for him. He's never kicked six in the AFL. Goldstein kicked five. Wake kicked four. Petrie kicked two, as well as Gibson, Zeeble, and McMillan kicked singles each. While for Melbourne, Kent kicked four. He had a fantastic game. Watts kicked three, who also had a fantastic game, but probably uh, the one where he, uh, he passed it off probably cost them the game. But nonetheless, he'll learn from that. Hogan kicked three as well. He had a good game. Oliver kicked two as well as Gorn, who was one of the best ruckmen out there. Probably better than Goldstein on the day, to be quite honest with you. Jones, Vandenberg, Dunn, Tyson, Hammers and Viney kicked singles each. It was a stunning game of football. And they only got over 12,000, which was a bit disappointing, but... It was a great game of football, and uh, I tell you what, the, the wind there, it, it does get quite breezy when you go there and watch a game of football. It, there normally is a little bit of a breeze, if not a strong breeze, so uh, very good game of football. 41 goals. Stunning. What was to be the game of the round between the Western Bulldogs and Hawthorne, which was set to be a cracker? It did turn out that way. At quarter time, the Dogs were kept goalless, 0-2 to 2-4 Hawthorne. They then were able to come back. They didn't lead at half time, but uh, weren't far behind. 4 5 to 5 5 at half time. The Western Bulldogs then led at three quarter time, 10 8 to 7 7. The fourth quarter was a very close quarter, and the Western Bulldogs, in the last, going into the last minute of the game, actually led the game. But then a kick down to Sisley, who was all by himself pretty much, was able to mark and goal. This was at the same time Bob Murphy getting injured. It was. Uh, uh, pretty sad if you're a dog supporter, to be honest, especially a dog supporter like me. Just absolutely sad, especially for the whole AFL world as well. He's just such a great person. He did his ACL in the last 50 seconds of the game. Very sad news. And, uh, well, if you're a doggy supporter, you might be a bit disappointed that they lost this game considering they were leading going into the last minute of the game. The final score being 13-12-90, defeated by Hawthorne, 14-9-93. The goal kickers for the Dogs, McLean and Biggs, Dalhouse kicked two, Roughhead, Bond and Pelly, Daniels, Suckling, Wallace, Boyd and Stringer kicked singles each. For Hawthorne, Rioli and Sigley who kicked the winner got three each. Sisley just an emerging player I reckon. Gunston, McAvoy, Bruce kicked two each while Sean Makers and Siegler kicked singles between them. If you're a dog supporter though, don't be too disappointed, even though it's a heartbreaking loss. They actually had some good signs going out of that game. And just to put it into context, last year, at the, the same time last year in round three, Hawthorne were uh, one loss, one win, and the dogs were undefeated, and they got smashed by 70 points against Hawthorne. So this was a much better game against Hawthorne for the dogs. And they're just an exciting team still. And uh, obviously there's some things to work on. But I think for the effort and, and how they kept fighting and fighting, I think Dogs fans should be very proud. And they've got, you know, two winnable games coming up. It's going to be a fantastic year for the Dogs once again. So uh, very good win. Uh, sorry, very good game for the Dogs, but very good win for Hawthorne. They're the benchmark side, as we know. And uh, they're going to be hard to beat again this year, I think. The final game of the round was at Simmons Stadium, the twilight game on Sunday between Geelong and Brisbane. Geelong pretty much got the job done. 
and won the game pretty convincingly. 18-17, 125 defeating the Lions, 7-14-56. Always going to be a hard task for the Lions, especially going down to Simmons Stadium. Geelong's goal kickers, Hawkins kick four. Dangerfield, Kirsten, McCarthy kicked... Uh, sorry, Dangerfield, Kirsten kick three each. McCarthy and Motlop kicked two each. Menzel, Blickloves, Duncan and Bartell kicked singles each. For the Brisbane Lions, Bell kicked two. Taylor, Bastanak, McStay, Martin and Green kicked singles each. Each. Okay, let's quickly look at the stats after round three. We'll start with the goals. Lynch, after his uh, great performance against Carlton on Saturday night, is able to top the leaderboard with 13 goals. Franklin and Waite are level with 12 goals each. Harvey, after his six-goal personal best, has been able to slot in at fourth with 11 goals. And finally, a fifth, the, uh, the leader of last round, actually, after last week's uh, round, has dropped a fifth with 10 goals. Disposal leaders after round three, we have Hall on the top place with 108 disposals. Mitchell second with 102 disposals. Montagna on third with 100 disposals. Parker on fourth with 99 disposals. And finally, Gaff for the West Coast Eagles on fifth with 95 disposals. Marks Kennedy is leading with 29 marks. Adams, who has been a very big impact player for the Dogs, has uh, got 28 marks and is on second level with Montagna with 28 marks. Hunter is on fourth with 27 marks. And Boyd is on, on fifth with 26 marks. So three of the five leaders uh, in this... Um, in this marks uh, after round uh, round three are, are dogs players. That's sensational. Finally, the tackles. Lang Langford leads with 27 tackles. Siebel second with 26 tackles. Tom Mitchell third with 25 tackles. Dalhouse, who is the leader after round two last week, has dropped down to fourth with 24 tackles level with North Melbourne's Andrew Swallow. And finally the ladder, the Sydney Swans currently lead the top of the 2016 AFL ladder undefeated on 12 points. The percentage is much better than Gold Coast who is on second also undefeated and uh, North Melbourne is on third undefeated as well after just winning against Melbourne. Western Bulldogs have fallen to fourth after being top of the table after last week's round. Brisbane Lions and Colton as well as Fremantle are yet to get a win in the 2016 season. Okie dokie, it's time now to get into round four, another massive round of football. It starts on Friday night in Perth at Domain Stadium between the West Coast Eagles and Richmond. Richmond have lost the last two games. West Coast bounced back beautifully last week as you saw. And uh, well, this game starting at 8 10 p.m. That is uh, that is Australian Eastern Time. The local time is 6.10 p.m. And uh, I'm going to tip West Coast pretty convincingly. I think this could be a, a pretty ugly game, actually. I think West Coast being at home, they uh, obviously did really well against Frio in the back end of the game last week. So I think they'll beat Richmond pretty convincingly in this Friday night game. Saturday, another five games. Starts at the MCG once again between Essendon and and Geelong. This is going to be an interesting game. In fact, it's the country game. That's what it's uh, being known as this week. And, uh, well, this game starts at 1.45pm and uh, I would probably say Geelong should get the win and uh, they will get their second straight win. The other Saturday afternoon game is at Aurora Stadium in Launceston between Hawthorne and St Kilda starting at 2.10pm. Hawthorne Continuing their Aurora Stadium, uh, Aurora Stadium fixture in Tasmania in Launceston this season, playing another four games, and this is just one of them. And uh, like I mentioned, this game starts at 2:10 p.m. I'm going to tip Hawthorne because they are pretty strong at Aurora Stadium, and uh, they're very hard to beat down at Launceston. So uh, uh, good luck to St Kilda trying to beat them. But uh, they were really good winners last week against Collingwood, and uh, they should take it up to Hawthorne somewhat but Hawthorne should be strong winners. The Twilight game is the Q clash between the Brisbane Lions and the Gold Coast Suns starting at 4.35pm at the Gabba. Uh, of course, Brisbane Lions are winless. They are without a win, and uh, the Gold Coast Suns, well, uh, they are just undefeated and going along really nicely. The Gold Coast have got North Melbourne next week. That will be a massive game. They should win this game and be 4 
wins with no losses after this game. Two Saturday night games are actually two... Uh, well, one of them's a really good game, and the other one should be an okay game. The first game being at Etihad Stadium starting at 7.25pm between Colton and the Western Bulldogs at Etihad Stadium. The Bulldogs should bounce back in this game, I would say, and Colton will stay winless after four rounds. The other Saturday night game, this will be a blockbuster between the Adelaide Crows and the Sydney Swans at the Adelaide Oval starting at 7.40pm. Hard game to tip, I think. And, uh, well, I think I'm going to go the Sydney Swans because I like the form of Franklin and Tippett at the moment. Hanelbury really performing, getting a lot of disposals as well as Parker, who took that fantastic mark. It will be a very close game, though, and it's hard to tip. It's hard to tip this game. So uh, I'm going to go Sydney Swans by maybe five points. Sunday three games starts at Star Trek Oval in Canberra, or as it's also known as Marnica Oval, at 10 past 1 p.m. Eastern time, the GWS and Port Adelaide. This is another hard game to pick, actually, and... Uh, well, I think I'm going to go GWS. I think, uh, you know, they were too bad against the Swans last week. A good win there against Geelong. They're pretty strong there, I think. And I think they will be pretty strong there this season. So GWS are winners for me. The next game, the mid-afternoon game on Sunday, is between Collingwood and Melbourne at the MCG. 3.20pm Eastern Time. Very hard to game. Very hard game to tip this one as well. I think I'm going to go Collingwood just, but Melbourne, if they play like they did last week in the, the three quarters that they did, there was a few mistakes that let them down, but if they fix them up, they will win this match. But I'm just going to go Collingwood to bounce back by about two or three points. The final game of the round is between North Melbourne and Fremantle at Etihad Stadium, 4.40pm, the twilight game. A must-win clash for Fremantle if they want to finish top of the table or anywhere near it in 2016. They're going to fight it hard, I reckon, North Melbourne. They you know, they were really put to the test last week at Blundstone, but back at Etihad Stadium, they should win this game comfortably. And uh, this game starting at 4.40pm, like I mentioned, the Twilight game. North Melbourne is my team. And that is it for this edition of the Ultimate AFL Show. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like, comment and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe for a new episode of this every Wednesday. Anzac Round. I'll be previewing Anzac Round next Wednesday as well as looking back at Round 4. So don't forget to tune in and stay tuned next Wednesday for next Wednesday's episode. Enjoy your weekend of footy. Until next time, I'm Jacob. Bye for now.